word are you using your motion? Are you reviewing at omnibus? No, great are point. you recommending at omnibus? Great point. Recommend. Yes. It's been a year. No, that's right. Thank you for that. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, no, that's, you know, it's got, yeah good question. Uh, yep. Uh, well, let me. Okay. I just, I also had a, a quick question. Is your substitute motion only dealing with the extra 10 million from the motion from Representative Amix that goes to Omnibus? Or are you dealing with the 10.3 flex also at the same time? I, I believe, and I don't want to represent Wassinger. I believe you recommended that the the substitute motion said to accept the governor's recommendations, period, and add ten million to omnibus. And we will continue to build this bill. This is just, yeah, this is one. Yes. Should I misspeak? The, the base recommendation that will come from this committee is governor's recommendation. So technically, unless you specifically say you're touching the 10.3, there's no real discussion on the 10.3. It's there. So his motion is just to review the addition of $10 million at Omnibus. Yeah. Recommend, yeah, recommend. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so just to clarify, and, and is that you're make, you're doing the big mo your substitute motion is the big motion to to uh, well, no well no then then that's not I'm sorry that's not what I want because I think we've got some other things we need to talk about mm -hmm. so okay let's let's step this back then your second has to agree. Okay, but I'm not withdrawing it yet because what Representative Amick's motion, mm -hmm. because with his motion, he's, he's, you're wanting to add $10 million to the governor's wreck, is that correct? So if we would pass his motion, would that be it? Would we have everything done? I guess I'm, I'm trying to. His amendment did not do the, what. Okay. Once, once you finish all your amendments, somebody needs yep. to pass out the bill. Yep. And I think that's okay. where there's some confusion. We're not okay. passing out the that's bill. Right. That's right. That's right. So really, what I need to do is, re, re, on my substitute motion, it should just be that to, to, to recommend ten million in omnibus, not nothing about the governor's recommendation, so we all understand. Perfect. Okay. Okay. That's your motion. Oh no, yes. Do we have a second? you okay. You agree to his? Okay. Okay. <laughs> what my substitute motion is is instead, Representative Amix wants to add ten million now. I'm saying, instead, let's recommend at, at the at the end of the t of our total budget we're passing out here that that is a we are requesting it be added at omnibus. But I think language has to be review, I believe, or can we request it? Again, it, this 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 year this off has getting, been. This is getting very confusing. All you're doing is putting an amendment in this subcommittee report that you, this committee is recommending to review the addition of $10 million at Omnibus. That's it. You like that? You like that? That's it. You like That's that, all that it second? Is. Sorry. Okay. We love Shirley. Yes. Any more discussion on that? Yes, Representative Amix. Part of that, can it be, it's our recommendation that it's reviewed? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Any more discussion? Now that we have that clear. <laughs> Would you like to close on your motion? I close. Okay, committee, you have heard the motion. I'm not repeating it. <laughs> um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. 
All those opposed? I believe the ayes have it. The ayes do have it. We will have that as an amendment. Thank you, committee. Excuse me. Yes. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Representative Wassinger. I, I just would like to say something that's probably not really fun for the schools to hear, but I think we all need to be aware of the fact, well, it's not a fact, but what I see is there's a bunch of duplication of programs within these universities, and they tend to, I believe, they tend to cannibalize students from other areas of the, the state. And throughout um, all of these budgets, I've seen them asking to continue funding some large programs that, and they've added programs. And I don't want to pick on K-State, but adding that nursing and uh, the aid program is expensive when there's declining student population. And we just keep making the budgets bigger and bigger and bigger. So I think we need to be mindful of that. Um, and I also think there are, there are some specific things within uh, the governor's recommendation of the 10.3 million. Um, both the 10 million and the 10.3 million are just specified to go to universities. It doesn't, while I don't want to micromanage what they do, um, I think it's not always put where we think it's going to go, that it's going to be divided up equally and, and the schools will have a little bit more money to do things. So I would like, um, as a start, to move that we also recommend that the 10.3 million of the governor's recommendation to the universities also be placed in on, on I'm not gonna be able to say it right today. On the bus. So. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second on that? Representative Riley, second. What discussion do we have, committee, on that? Representative Woodard. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to the uh, maker of the motion. Um, I am going to oppose this. I, I think that it's important that we know what this funding is going to go to, which is why I appreciate the nature of the motion. I also think that um, we could give the Board of Regents an opportunity to pr to propose that detailed plan of how the funding would be utilized. Um, and so I don't want to make a substitute motion or go down that path again. but. <laughs> Uh, I do think that uh, we could request the information from them to be considered by appropriations at Omnibus of what that plan is going to go for. Uh, my hesitation of us taking it out and saving it for Omnibus, I'm fine with it being reviewed, um, but taking it out now makes me fearful that we potentially don't even get the $10 million that we're asking the Appropriations Committee to consider later while also not getting this $10 million. They're already down, I think, 38 million, I don't have the number right in front of me, potentially to lower that another 10.3 if they, if appropriations didn't consider this, just gives me a little bit of, of heartburn, so I'm gonna oppose the motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, Shirley, would you like to? Well, I just need clarification. Okay. Representative Woodard just brought up my question. There's two ways your motion could go, and I just wanna make sure I write it down right. You can delete the 10.3 and review it at Omnibus, or you can leave the 10.3 in the budget and review it at Omnibus. So I just need to know if you're going to delete the 10.3. I am not. Okay. So that would make, I would hope that that would make that a little bit more palatable. Representative Woodard. Thank you, Madam Chair. Then I would be supportive of this motion. Okay, thank you. Okay, other discussion? I will mention to you all that I've had quite a bit of conversation with the regents and others about the deferred maintenance. And I think we may even have a, an informational hearing on deferred maintenance so we understand that issue better. And it... 
Madam Chair, you're in the middle of a motion. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. It has to do with the motion. It, I understand. It has to do with the motion. And so I think reviewing it at Omnibus, not deleting it, but reviewing it Omnibus does give us an opportunity to have some direction in that. And it might be deferred maintenance. It might be something else. We're going to learn about that, I hope. So that, that's why I brought that up. We, we, it gives us an opportunity to give it some direction. So I am in favor of the motion. Any other discussion? Representative Rogers. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate the comments. Um, what I heard today was that they're presenting next week to the regents on programs and so on. So I, mean, I guess it's appropriate. I do have some concern. We all know where the finances are of the state. You know, we're not going to have a ferry come bring us billions of dollars, um, you know. Um, because we get, when we get to building the final budget, we could have a tendency where, you know, we don't have omnibus like we did last year. Uh, that would create, a, I mean, I understand just a review, but it's, it's still that whole idea. Um, you know, I've made my, you know, know what I think about, uh, I agree, and I agree to defer, deferred maintenance and, and you know, when we heard last year that was going to be the push, was deferred maintenance. Well, that got shifted to something else. And so, um, you know, we could go down every university and there's been something that's gone on and luckily it hasn't been brought up. And I'm not going to bring up those things that, you know, give themselves and the state pause of what's going on. Um, you know, what I guess what I would encourage is continue to have those conversations with universities and colleges and so on uh, if, you, if you do have questions. Um, I don't know where I am on this, quite honestly. Um, this was, I didn't know this was coming, and so um, we'll listen. I'm curious of more comments of what people think um, with this. So thank you, Madam Chair. What other comments do people have? Anybody else? Representative Fairchild. I reviewed the governor's recommendations and, you know, I was emailing you, Madam Chair, that I just wanted to accept the governor's recommendations that she had made. And so I, I would probably oppose this motion and would just support going along with the governor's recommendations for the universities. Okay, thank you. Other, um, other comments? Representative Amix. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and, and just to make sure that I understand, um, the $10.3 million right now is going to the Board of Regents with the flexibility of seeing how and where they think the greatest need may be uh, in, in the way that they need to have it spent. If we go th uh, to the recommendation and, and the motion that was made by the Vice Chair, potentially is there that opportunity that it may not be funded at Omnibus? So I think I think that being said, uh, then um, I I'm, I'm sorry I can't support that because I think it takes away from the base even greater or the potentially could take away. So anyway. Okay. Any other comments? Representative Wassinger, would you like to close on your motion? I don't see any other discussion. Madam Chair, I close. Okay, committee, you have heard the motion. It is to take the flex 10.3 million and move it over to Omnibus. And I'm not gonna say recommend or uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, I think you all understand. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. All those opposed? I believe that the no, I believe the no's have it. So the motion fails. Okay, committee, what else? We, we, we're still, yes, Representative Rogers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. I move that uh, we um, fund SB 155 uh, to the tune of $2.1 million for uh, the current year, and then the, which would be restoration, and then $8.3 million for the next total, total of $10.4 million. Okay. 
Do we have a second on that motion? Representative Amex seconds it. Um, yeah. Would you like to explain? go ahead and explain? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we, we've talked today, we've talked throughout that uh, uh, and seemingly we have a lot of support not only in this committee but with our other colleagues for Senate Bill 155 and to give those opportunities for you know, technical training uh, and other uh, situations going on in our high schools through our colleges. And it would just seem to me that, uh, and this may be one, I don't know where it will, where it will stick in, in, in a probes, um, uh, but um, you know, it just seems to me if, if we want to show our commitment, I think that has grown over the years to you know, that technical school starting in, in high schools and, uh, and so on, uh, that uh, we could show our commitment uh, by making sure it's fully funded, because I know one of the things we talked about early is uh, earlier is to uh, get those payments early. And so I think as we get back to normal, hopefully by this fall, um, uh, that um, we'll have greater, bigger, larger enrollments again, so. Okay, discussion on the motion that's on the floor. Yes, Reverend, sorry, I'm just, I, today I can't see you very well. Representative Riley. Madam Chair, I'm, I'm supportive of this program. I'm just don't understand that we've just moved a whole bunch of money to Omnibus to uh, to later why we're putting this, adding this now. It seems like we should have added this first before we had our other motions. I mean, like, like I say, I'm supportive. I just would like to have a little more clarification. Thank you, Mayor, Madam Chair. Well, I, I think in the, in the process of putting a budget together, you, you know, uh, you put bits and pieces uh, in it and it made, that's why they call it making sausage <laughs> because, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily always fall in line of the way we, you know, we want. So we're looking at all the different pieces and, um, you know, again, I'm not necessarily the biggest supporter of adding a bunch of money. But in my five years, I've, I've been a proponent of making good investments of our tax dollars. And so to me, higher education is a good investment. And if it's, you know, we need, you know, put our money where our mouth is. And, you know, um, boy, when many of us were in college, the last thing you wanted to do was go to have do technical education or, or community college. But now that's where the action is. I mean, that's where the jobs are in less than a year. You can come make more than somebody's with a four-year job. So I guess what I'm saying is, uh, asking is if it's supportive of the committee that um, it, uh, it goes and, um, um, you know, um, then take our chances on the bus. I mean, I'm sorry, at, at full appropriation, I got ominous on the brain. You know, but, but again, let, let's keep one thing in mind you know, the, the budget, as, as uh, uh, Chairman Humphreys will present to the full appropriation, is going to be torn apart. And then they can, if they say, well, that's too much money, or we, why, why did you make this big request? She defends it or says, well, you know, it was, it was one guy in the committee that seemed to, you know, filibuster, and we just ran out of time. And so we, no, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I don't want to be that way. Do not talk until, you right. know, 3.30. No, 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 I won't. I won't. But, but that, that's... That's kind of the situation so as we build the budget. In, in theory, it's, it's always great to do building blocks, um, but in reality, it's kind of as you piece the thing together, it's kind of like putting a puzzle together. And so, I mean, I, I'd be curious of other people's uh, comments. I mean, if I'm way off base, that's fine. But uh, I, I think that uh, that also sends a strong message um, to the other side of the building, too, that that we are a believer in, uh, in, S in Senate Bill 155 and what it, uh, what it stands for. Okay, thank you. Do y'all, does ever, is everyone clear what Representative Rajas is talking about? I mean, I think, you know, but are you, yes, Representative Woodard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm like frantically flipping through my budget book. Um, to the maker of the motion, is this, would this be described as a full restoration or 
not restoration because it's not been funded. This would be full funding, and if that's the case, the 2.5 million this year and the 8.5 million next year, what is the, that's eight and a half million out of what is the full funding? Or what's the percentage increase? Would you like to ask? Uh, or surely. So to be clear, 2.1 this year, 8.3 next year, and that would be to fully fund the students that are being provided the SB 155 classes. And Heather, if I could just ask a question, remind us what, why such a large disparity between those two numbers? Because of COVID, we had less 155 enrollment this year because of the mismatch at the start of the schedule. So had we not had the pandemic, we probably would have needed the 8.5 million that you all put in last year for this year, but then the governor allotted it and then we had the enrollment decline. That's why we only need 2.1 this year. Next year, we anticipate to go back to our normal enrollment, which is why we think we need not 8.5, but the 8.3 based upon what we're seeing from the trends. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Shirley, would you like to speak? The question was, what was the funding currently? In 2021, the funding is $29.2 million, and in 22, it's $28.5 million. Thank you. That does answer my question. It's just, this is a, I want to be very supportive of this. It's just that we just put off, our universities are experiencing a 5.5% cut. Um, that's assuming that the $10 million enhancement doesn't get made at Omnibus. And I know that this is tough. This is an incredible program. We need to get to a point where we can fully fund it. Um, but we need to get to a point where we can fully fund the requests from our Board of Regents uh, for the universities. We need to get to a point where we can fully fund all of the requests we have. We have legislation coming down the pike uh, that deals with Promise Scholarship that will address some of these, not all, uh, careers. And so while this is like one of my favorite programs, I don't think I can support this motion but I will absolutely uh, respect everyone else's vote and see where it falls. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you brought up the Promise Act. That It is kind of in the back of all of our minds, I think, too, even though we don't know all the details yet. Representative Wassinger. I, Shirley, may, I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm looking at... I'm oh, sorry. Shirley, I just want to make sure I'm looking at the budgets correctly. Part of the, um, the addition to each university included was the 2.5% salary increase for every employee, correct or not? Not for the Board of Regents. That was the 10.3. At the 10.3 was the amount of the 2.5 to the universities to be used at the Regents' discretion. And, and it was originally thought that it would go to 2.5% raises for each employee. She's got, in, in, she's built into most of her budget a 2.5% state employee increase. Did that include the, the... Okay, how that was done this year is when the governor puts in some type of a pay plan, it, the amount of state general fund money or special revenue appropriated money is in the back of the bill under the State Finance Council because the State Finance Council has to certify the numbers. This year, the governor did not add university funding to the back in the State Finance Council. It was put in the operating grant under the universities so that they could choose how to use that money. I have, I have a little heartburn with a 2.5% raise. I, God, I'd love to give it to everybody. Um, but you're looking at a lot of people who had to close their businesses because of COVID. We have a lot of unemployed people that aren't getting payments due to the mess in, in the Department of Labor. It, the, it, the, whole, the whole year has just kind of gone into a blur. So I think it's really... Ill, ill-advised to start giving raises when so many people are not. And, and so that's why I wanted to bring that up. Thank you, Shirley. 
Thank you. Uh, Representative Riley. <clears throat> Madam Chair, just a clarification though, this money that the representative is uh, requesting here, that isn't specifically for salaries, correct? That's to re uh, build the programs back up again. Yeah, and just, it, it is a refund. It, it, a re it, it's not a going into a program, it is refunding those community colleges. Is that correct? Yes, it's yes. what that is is you get ba you get paid based on uh, participation. Pa past. As yes, that's why, and that's kind of why it was set up before to where after because you got a student complete. That's and that, that was one of my heartburns about paying early is you could have students enroll and not that you know, everybody's but they may went to school maybe like I did. And you know, true confessions. Hey, today. you know, uh, it's it's out there. But so so yeah. So, all right. Thank you. Any other uh, discussion on the motion that's on the table? Shall I like to close on your motion? Uh, I close. Committee, you have heard the motion. It is to go ahead and put the two point one and the eight point three into the budget, so that uh, it will fund the SB 155 reimbursement. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Thank you. We have added that. Okay. All right, committee. Now, what is your will on other things? Or I would entertain a motion on the big budget. <laughs> you have something else. I, I, have, okay. I don't have another motion. I, I'm, just, I'm curious. Uh, on Representative Wassinger's comments, should we? Do you want to review the ten point three? Uh, you know, be, you know that that's where. I, mean, I I believe me, I understand, and you and I both deal with people every every day. You know that this this mess is part of labor, and so quite honestly, my my, you know, the reason why I bring that up is because I'm guessing. I don't know if that two point five is going to make it in the full appropriations because of situations like that, because there's so much we don't know yet. So, you know, that's because the, the comments you made just a bit ago, I want to make sure because they didn't get lost in, in a different discussion. So I, I'm just, I'm curious. Well, that was one of the reasons I made the motion to, to put that 10.3 in omnibus and it failed. I guess I, 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 I guess I, yeah, right. Well, I wasn't, I guess I wasn't thinking. So, sorry. Well, I mean, I, I, th I thought I was, I thought it was more evident of what I was trying to do because I, I. Well, you want to, you want to uh, remake your motion? Try it again. I might change my mind. I, I'm going to let Representative Wooder speak first. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll buy uh, the Vice Chair some time with my comments about that. Um, just generally. For me, I, I think it's important for us to remember that while the governor did include $10.2 million or 10.3 for what that could be a 2.5% pay plan or whatever they need to use it for with their priorities, we need to be clear that $10.2 million does not cover the cost of a 2.5% pay raise across the system of the Board of Regents. At the University of Kansas, for example, our state general fund dollars make up, generate about 18% of their budget. Therefore, this portion of that funding that would go to KU would cover 18% of the cost of a 2.5% pay increase. It would cost $60, $70 million to give a 2.5% pay raise. That's probably on the lower end across the board at the Board of Regents. And so this would not cover the cost of that, which is why we'll probably hear back from the Regents once we get that detailed plan of what that looks like, what those priorities are going to look like. Um, I would love for my friends that work at a university to get that pay increase. They're hardworking, and if the state employees are getting it, I would hope they would get something too. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the, the situation that our universities are in, seeing a 5.5% pay cut or uh, funding cut from the state for our universities, the budget realities are unlikely that they're going to be seeing pay increases. We're going to be seeing terminations and layoffs, which was, were outlined by the universities in their hearings. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Wassinger, surely already had told us that it wasn't including state the secondary ed uh, employees. 
But I would like to review the, the, the governor's pay plan um, beca because I have issues not necessarily right in your, in your budget, but in our budget, I should say. Our budget. Thank you. Okay, so I don't think that's action for our committee. Okay, just making sure I'm clear on that. Shirley. Um, it can be in as a uh, note or a review to uh, House Appropriations to review the pay plan. Okay. Since that's more of a global. Okay. Would you like to do that? What, does that need to be a formal motion to uh, put it as a notation or what, what do we? Yes. Yes. Okay. Madam Chair, I so mm -hmm. move. Okay. Would anyone like to, Representative Riley seconds it. Any discussion? Okay, I see no discussion. All those in favor of putting a notation uh, that we would like to make sure that the governor's pay plan is reviewed, say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. Okay, the ayes have it. That will go in. Thank you. Okay, committee. <laughs> what else? What else do we want to talk about? And we're still waiting on, uh, you know, our, our big final recommendation what what would y'all like to do if there's i don't want to cut you short if there's something in the in intermediary you want to talk about that's fine too but if we're ready to do the other one let's do that represent woodard thank you madam chair and thank you to the committee members um, for the lively discussion for everything you all bring it's been a fun couple of weeks i'm also excited to hopefully get a couple 130 hours back <laughs> um, but i appreciate you all appreciate the discussion so with that madam chair i would move that the committee adopt the governor's recommendation for fiscal year 2021 and 2022 including the amendments that have been approved by the committee do we have a second representative riley seconds it Discussion, Representative Rogers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, could we get a total for sure on that? You just want me to go over the amendments? Yeah, I'll just add them up. Um, we passed two amendments to add language for the Board of Regents. Uh, the first one was to not allow transfers for three of the funds the tuition for tech ed, the non-tiered and the tiered. We had a ad language for the tuition for technical education account to receive payments made uh, 60 days after the student class starts. We had a recommend to add the $10 million review at Omnibus. We added, I say we, the committee, added <laughs> SB 155 uh, in 2021, 2.1 million, and 2022, 8.3 million. There is a ad language to ask the House Appropriations to review the pay plan. And then the final was move out the governor's recommendation as amended for 21 and 22. Representative Rajas. There's something I was forgetting. Since it, it, it may be too late. But the one thing we didn't talk about, and, and maybe since we've added some money, uh, the governor did not recommend the National Guard reimbursement. It was what, how many, it's, it's, it's not very, the scholarship. Um, are we, we're too, I really can't add that. I don't think, I'm, I never feel like we're too late. If someone wants to do something, I'm okay with it. I will tell you, though, that the National Guard was okay with that, from my understanding. It was okay to not add it. Yes, they were okay to not add it. Okay, I guess I read that wrong. Okay, Shirley, you may want to comment. Uh, I believe they were okay for 2021, if I understood correctly, but I know they've been asking for the... 2022. And, and what is the 2022 amount? That is. And what page would um, that be on? That is, well, on mine it's page 13 because I have the paper copy, not the book. Um, it's in the enhancement box toward the bottom. It's 1.399566, about 1.4 million.
So we have a motion on the table and we have a second to accept the governor's recommendations. Madam Chair, I'd be willing to withdraw my motion if that is um, a consideration the committee would like to make. What is the second feel about that? All you're doing for the moment, you're just re you're taking away your second so that we can put something else on the table. I withdraw my motion. Okay, Madam Representative Chair. Rajas. I, thank you. I I move that we uh, we um, add ba or long day that we um it's not add back what, what's the word i'm thinking of we reinstate there it is we no i guess we don't need to reinstate Just an ad. We, we need to add for 22 for 22 right to to add one point is 1.4 is that right one you can round the figures what it is for for fiscal year 22. for the national guard scholarship the national guard scholarship mm -hmm. program okay do we have a second uh, Representative Burr seconds. Any discussion on that? Go ahead. And the only thing I'd like to say is I think the National Guard does a lot for us. And taking the military in our, our state and, and leaving them out is egregious. So I thank you for making that motion and not forgetting it. Yes, Representative Rogers. Thank you. I agree with with Representative Washinger. I, you know, it's not a, again, a dollar is a dollar, and I understand that. And but you know, this committee has shown uh, pride in the SB 155. I think uh, again for a a huge budget of billions and bill, you know, several billion dollars for this to uh, give back to those that serve their country and, and serve us and keep us safe and protected uh, if they want a further education i think it's a uh, it's something that we should uh, we should uh, uh, try to get uh, through so thank you okay all right any other discussion on that okay then will you close your on your motion close okay so all those in favor of adding in the national guard scholarship of approximately 1.4 million for fy 2022 please say aye all those opposed? No? Okay, the ayes have it, and we will add that in for our recommendations. Okay, Representative Woodard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I will make a motion that the committee uh, recommend the governor's budget for fiscal year 2021 and 2022 with the amendments made by the committee. Seconded by Rep Representative Riley. Discussion committee. Representative Rajas. I just want to say th thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I know it can, this first budget out is always a bit because it's, it's all kind of new and we're in uncertain times, but okay. you did a great job. And, and I, I want to commend the committee um, that, uh, you know, it's kind of a slow process and it really ramps up. And so. Um, I, I want to thank them, and, and, and but uh, just publicly want to thank you for your leadership, and and uh, I guess good luck in front of the whole committee. <laughs> you will be there, so you ask me good, que nice questions, okay? Yes, I agree wholeheartedly with the committee. I feel like we've done good work today, and I appreciate you all being patient with me and all of this too. So, Representative, would, would you like to close? Thank you, Madam Chair. I close. Okay, all those in favor of accepting the governor's recommendations along with our amendments, please say aye. All those opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. And we have passed the governor's recommendations and Shirley wants to say something. Well, just, just to finish up, this will be just like the last time I'm going to email you a subcommittee report. And um, so look at it. Um, if you don't respond, that's an approval um, so you will get that probably tomorrow, um, and I'll probably do a pretty quick turnaround for that. Okay. Okay, thank you for all your work. Okay, then we are adjourned. Okay, committee, I will say we, do, we are on the call of the chair on Tuesday in case we have some informational hearing. 
Uh, I'm, but eventually I would like to do something so we can learn more about the deferred maintenance, but I will let you know about that. So, okay, thank you so much. Drive safe, home, and be, uh, stay warm. We're adjourned.